Okay. There's this traditional moment where the grateful audience thanks the organizing committee. But as a member of the organizing committee, I wanted to short circuit that uh, moment by saying just a word about what it was like to organize this conference. Organizing this conference meant, you know, we said to Paul, you know, something, and then we would get a detailed three page, Paul uh, Zeidel here, we would get a detailed kind of three page email thinking through all of the tiny details and explaining to us how he met with the, with, the low, uh, with the Italians and discussed the details and this and that. And we would send emails that said, uh-huh. So anyways, so as, as the organizing committee would like to take this opportunity to very gratefully thank the spectacular organizer, Paul Zeidel, before he skips town, think, of, think about um, also sc summer school participants, we also organized the summer school, so let's all express our thanks to Paul. And I will now turn this over to a different Paolo. Thank you. As you can see, I will be chair this morning, but please do not be alarmed because I got specific instructions about the duration of the talks. <laughs> and now I, will, I would like to introduce our first speaker of the morning, Dave Gabay, who will talk about knotted three bolts in S4 and knotted three spheres in S1 cross S3. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, well, it's... It's really great to be here at this, this meeting in person in, in, in honor of, of Tom. And I should say that I had had the pleasure of, of, of knowing Tom during a period where, uh, before he was famous, by which I mean, I mean, I, I knew, knew Tom at a time when Amongst experts, I mean, the experts knew that he was already doing great work, but, but his fame hadn't sort of spread to the, to the sort of broader mathematical community. So I'd like to just t tell just briefly just two sort of an anecdotes from, from that period. And it's, it's been a long time ago, so if the, the events didn't transpire exactly as I, as I say, well, they should have. <laughs> and... So, so you know, years ago, uh, I, I was I was at Caltech on on the faculty, and and Tom was 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 there, you know, for in some type of postdoctoral position, and uh, and and that 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 full semester, I I went to uh, you know a couple of different meetings, and you know someone would come up to me and say, you know, Tom Rovka. Is, is, is in your department, he's, he's doing just, just amazing work. You, know, you should, should hire him you know, as, a, you know, as a senior faculty member. And he said, like, Tom who? And, but then, then, you know, then, you know, then an, another person would, just, would say the exact same thing. And, 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 and this happened like, like three or four different times. So, uh, so at the time, at, at Caltech, there was basically two people that were like the driving force setting the direction. So, so I went over to, to one of them with this, this, this wad of paper with, with, with Tom's papers, and, and I said, well, you know, we should you know, seriously consider just you know, making to, Tom an offer. And so, uh, so I handed these, these papers over, and he sort of flips through and, and says, well, uh, these, these are just his, his, his pre preprints. Where, where is his published papers? And I said, well, there, there really aren't any. And then he sort of flips through again and he says, there's, there's only two preprints here. And I said, yes, but, but they're good preprints. And anyway, you know, this, this guy was, I, he had, he's very well connected. I think he was already sort of clued into Tom actually before I was and was very supportive through, through the whole thing. And, 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 and the fact is that you know, the case just sailed through the department and you know, the administration. And uh, okay, so let me tell you like another s little story, which is 
I guess around that time, there was some special lecture at, at Caltech. And well, by, by Caltech standards, there's this, you know, this huge audience packed into this, this lecture hall. And, 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 and sometime in, in the beginning, uh, towards the beginning of the lecture, the, the speaker just sort of throws out a problem to the, you know, question to the audience. And, and Tom sort of immediately, so just casually, just, just, just gives the, you know, the correct answer. And the, the speaker seemed a little bit surprised, but uh, OK. And then, then, then a little time later, you know, the, the speaker asks another question, sort of with a tone of, well, I don't expect anyone to answer to this, but if they try, they'll probably miss the subtle point. You know, which point Tom just, just, you know, just casually just nails the question. And, and this guy was just like, just totally taken aback. And, and after a moment says, like, who is this guy? <laughs> and by that point, Tom already was, was famous at, at Caltech. So, so this cry went up from the audience and said, well, that's Tom Orovka. And there's sort of like this no sort of recognition from this person. But on the other hand, there are no more questions. <laughs> so, uh, right. So, OK, so I, I, I want to tell you about knotted three balls in S4 and, and, and knotted three spheres in S1 cross S3. So, so this lecture is about co-dimension one knotting in four manifolds. So the, the big question is, in the four sphere, is, is there like a, a smoothly embedded co-dimension one knot? Is there a smoothly embedded three sphere in the four sphere, which is uh, not, topical, topical, not smoothly standard? Is every smooth, smooth three sphere in the four sphere uh, smoothly standard. Of course, that's sort of a problem everyone knows. And um, uh, well, I'm sorry, I can't say anything about that. But 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 closely related problems are the problem of knotted spheres in S1 cross S3 and knotted balls. So so to see this, if you have a, a smooth sphere. In, in the four sphere, and you can just take a point on, in each side, then the complement is just S3 cross R. So, so you could just, you know, just, just, just view this sphere as living in S3 cross R, or, or even S, you know, S1 cross S3. And, and conversely, if you have an interesting sphere in S1 cross S3, then you could sort of lift to the infinite cyclic cover and and view that sphere as sitting in S1 cross R, which is sitting inside of S4. So, um, so, so the question of knotted three spheres, knotted separa separating three spheres in S1 cross S3 is, 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 is very closely related to the studying knotted spheres in, in, in S4. And um, so, the difference is that you might have a knotted sphere that becomes unknotted when you lift some finite sheeted cover, but uh, but nevertheless, the, the you know this this thinking about it in this way just sort of gives you sort of a, an approach to either constructing interesting uh, examples or trying to or or somehow coming to grips of what are sort of phenomena that have to be dealt with in, in addressing this question, and. And another closely related thing, which I'll sort of give a definition in a moment, is, is this question of knotted three balls in the four sphere. So, uh, right. So, so, so what do I mean by a knotted three ball in the four sphere? So, what I mean is that uh, that here's. Here we are in the four sphere, and here's, say, the standard two sphere. And the standard two sphere bounds the standard three ball. So we, we just you know, decide on what those things are. Then we say a ball is, is knotted if, if, if its boundary coincides with the, is, is the standard two sphere. But this ball can't be isotoped 
to, this, to the standard sphere by an isotopy fixing the boundary point-wise. So, um, so, so here's, well, I mean, you could make this definition in, in, in all dimensions, and, uh, and so, so here's, well, I mean, the classic dimensions of two and three, it's, it's well known that, that, that there's no, no knotted balls in, um, in, you know, one balls in two space or th two balls in three space. And uh, so, so, so what's, the question, what's the relation between this question of knotted three balls in four sphere versus knotted three spheres in the four sphere? And the fact is, if you have a knotted three sphere in the four sphere, then you can make that knotted sphere look standard you know, at, at you know, a neighborhood of some, some ball. And so, so the complementary ball would be then a knotted three ball in, in the four sphere. And conversely, if you have a knotted three ball in the four sphere, and you happen to find another ball which, which shared the same boundary and, and its interior is disjoint from the first one, and the second one was a standard ball, then you could put the two things together and you would construct a, uh, a knotted three sphere in the four sphere. So, uh, so, so that's the relation between knotted balls and, um, and knotted spheres. And I should say that that you know, you know the way I've, I've I've stated this this definition of knotted ball of you know k ball and k plus one space, you know you, you could you could you could just as well sort of ask ask this question for uh, you know f about balls of 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 bigger co-dimension. So so you could ask well if you have you know a, a circle a standard circle in in four space and the standard two disk, and and now if you have another two disk with the same boundary, are those two disks isotopic from one to the other, fixing the boundary point wise? And well, the answer is is, is yes. That's that's what you know. I, I proved that some time ago. That's actually that's a f a form of the four dimensional light bulb theorem. So. Uh, so the light bulb theorem is, is you could take that as sort of a, a warm up to this, this question of, of knotted balls. It's just a, it's the same question, one, one higher co-dimension co two instead of co-dimension one. Now, I should say that there is sort of, you know, in, it, was, it was known, well, 50 years ago that, that there's, in high dimensions, there's knotted, well, knotted five balls in six space, and knotted six balls in seven space, and so on and so forth. Actually, that's, that's due to Hatcher and Hatcher-Wagoner. And actually, I don't think that, that they had this concept of knotted balls, but, but, they, had, but they proved something, you know, you know amazing result, which, which as you'll see in a little bit, is, is, is equivalent to this question. So, so it's fair enough to attribute this theorem, theorem to them. So, um, right. So, so I've, I've been thinking about this for, for, for a while. And you know, I, I, I first thought that, um, well, that there weren't, every, every three ball was, was, was standard. But around 2017, I, Sort of, sort of convinced myself that there were sort of knotted examples, and 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 that's sort of the, the content, main content of today's lecture, which is that there's there really are knotted three balls in, in four space, and that's due to m myself and Ryan Budney and um, and and independently uh, Tadayuki Watanabe, and so. Uh, so okay, so the classic dimensions, of, you know, arcs in, in two space, two disks in three space. Okay, so this lecture is about three balls in four space. This question: Are there knotted four balls in five space? 
well, Ryan and I think that, that there aren't any, and well, sorry, that there are, are knotted four balls in five space, and we have sort of explicit example, which uh, I'll show you in, at, at the end. There's time. And, and then, then the higher dimensions, that's, that's due to Hatcher and Wagoner. So, um, right. So, okay, so, so this ball, this, this, this lecture is about knotted balls in three balls in four space. So, but the, sort of a counterpoint is this, this ba basic fundamental theorem of, of Cerf and Palais from over 60 years ago. And, this is a theorem that, that Bob Edwards calls differential topology 101. And, and their theorem is that, well, modulo the obvious necessary conditions, two k-dimensional balls in, in some four manifold, any two k-dimensional balls in a four manifold are, are ambiently isotopic. So, I mean, the obvious condition is they, 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 they have to be in the same sort of component, and if they're co-dimension, you know, if they're balls of, uh, of uh, co-dimension one, well, then, um, well, if they're co-dimension zero, then, then they, 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 have, they certainly have to have the right induced orientation. So, and, and this is sort of, you know, a, actually, you know, a, a nice exercise in differential topology. And you can see that, that here's, here's sort of the key idea. I mean, you could think of this as sort of telling you, you know, how to do an ambient isotopy of, 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 a, of a germ, uh, of, uh, you know, a, a ball in, um, in N space. I mean, well, here's, here's the formula. And you can see that just there's, there's a, a smooth isotopy of taking this embedding to, to one which is, uh, which is linear, and then you can sort of straight, straighten it up. So, um, so it's, that's the funny thing, is that just the, the standard theorem is that any two balls are smoothly isotopic if you're allowed to sort of move the boundaries around. But once you fix the boundary, then, then, then that's sort of a, a, a different question. So here's... Th Three equivalent formulations of the same thing. You know, at first glance, these 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 ideas seem seem very different, but 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 just basically relatively elementary arguments sh show they're the same. So so you can see like like uh, condition one, knotted ball versus uh, diff of something. You know, you know, how, you know how, how do you relate sort of embeddings versus diffeomorphisms? Well, um, well, the fact is, if, suppose you have some, some ball in, in, in the three-sphere with the standard two-sphere boundary. And, and so Cerf uh, and Palais tell us that, that there's sort of a, 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 an ambient isotopy of three-space taking one to the other. So, uh, so the time one map of, of this isotopy is a diffeomorphism of the four sphere, which would take this knotted ball to, to the standard one. So up to diffeomorphism, you know, there's, there's, you know, thanks to Surf and Palais, there's, there's really only one knotted ball. So, um, right. So, but it, it, this question could also be viewed in, in S1 cross the three ball. So if you have you know, the three ball cross S1, then, then the, you, we have the idea of the standard three ball, point cross three ball. So we'll say a three ball is, is knotted if, if it say it has the same boundary, but it's, but it's, um, but it's, it's, it's different. So, and, well, as we all know, that if you have a, you know, standard two sphere in, in four space, then if you re remove a neighborhood of that sphere, then you're left with S1 cross the three ball. So, so in this way, you could translate questions about S1 cross the three ball into, uh, into questions about knotted three balls in four space. And, 
And as I explained, the surf palais t tells you how to relate you know, balls versus diffeomorphism. So if you have a diffeomorphism of the four sphere fixing the two sphere that takes one ball to the other, that, that induces a diffeomorphism of S1 cross B3, which fixes the boundary pointwise and takes sort of one ball to the other. So, and, and actually these things are groups. I mean, you could, you could actually you know, comp compose them. You could certainly see that at the level of diffeomorphism. So, uh, so anyway, these are three useful ways of thinking about the same issue. And, and in this great work of, of Hatcher and Hatcher Wagoner from 50 years ago, what they did, they computed pi zero of diff of S1 cross the n ball, where n was, say, bigger than or equal to six. Diffeomorphism is fixing the boundary. OK, so, um, right. So I want to also want to tell you a, a few basic facts before we sort of maybe just dive into some, some yeah, Danny. Oh, so the point is of this, this theorem here is three is, is, a, is a variable. Three is an integer. And four, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah anyway, thank you for saying that. This, you know, this, this is a theorem that's true in all dimensions. So, so three could be, three is any in, in, positive integer, and four is the next integer after three. Okay. Just, just the way I'm wired, I, I just like to think of things sort of concretely. but. Um, anyway, thanks, thanks for bringing, bringing that up. And so, um, so here's actually a very useful uh, vibration. I mean, this idea of vibrations uh, among, you know, relating embeddings and, and uh, diff diffeomorphisms of various things goes, goes back to, to surf around 1960. And a, a very useful fiber bundle is, is, is this one that I, I have uh, up there. And, and the idea is that if you have a diff, so, so the little zero, diff zero, means diffeomorphism's homotopic to identity. So if you have a diffeomorphism of S1 cross S3, you could, you could ask, well, where does the S1 go to? So that's, that's an embedding of S1 and S1 cross S3. And the little zero means the embedding is, is in the right homotopy class and, and the orientation sort of pointing up. And, and the fiber of that, is diffeomorphisms of S1 cross S3, which fix, um, f fix this, this standard vertical circle. And if you, if you apply the homotopy uh, exact sequence corresponding to this, this bundle, I mean, the last terms are you know, as, as shown, shown here. So, um, so you can see pi 1 of the embeddings of the circle go into pi 0 of diff of S1 cross B3 which goes into pi zero of diff of S1 cross S3. I mean, there's actually a little bit of translation going from one to the other using uh, uniqueness of regular neighborhoods, whatever. But, um, right. So, so, so here's, here's the theorem, which we prove is that, that if you look at pi zero of diff of S1 cross S3, well, modulo diffeomorphisms that are sort of supported on the four on some little four ball, that's that's an infinitely generated group, and uh, and, and 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 similarly the diffeomorphisms of S1 cross B3, which fix the boundary, modulo diff of four balls, that's also infinitely generated. So, so by this correspondence, I just state what if zero. Isn't diff zero connected? That's a really great question, and that's that's what. So diff so so, uh, surf's great well one of surf's great theorems is diff zero of the three spheres connected. But what about S one cross S three? That's that was sort of that's what. Oh, um, well, so, okay, so, 
So diff of S1 cross B3 fixed the boundary left. Pi 1 of embedding 0. Oh, so, so diff zero, actually, you, you also bring up a good question because I use this, this expression diff zero actually in papers in two different ways. One could be. I remember that. <laughs> you know, diff zero can be viewed as diff, you know, the identity component of, 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 of diff, or it could be diffeomorphisms that are homotopic to the identity. So, so thank you for pointing this out. So, so here, diff zero means diffeomorphisms homotopic to identity, as opposed to identity component. So, uh, right, so you almost killed the lecture. <laughs> thank you. So, um, right, are any, any other questions? Um, right, so, okay, so here's, so, you might, so, so, so our stuff is extremely explicit. And, and here are, are pictures of, of knotted balls. So here we're, it's, here we're, view, you're, we're viewing, this, viewing these balls in S1 cross the three ball. And so, so look at the picture on the left. Actually, the conjecture is this, this ball is, is knotted. If you look at an early version of our paper, maybe early two, first two versions, we, we claimed that it was, that it was knotted. But it's, 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 there's a mistake in that. And so this, it's, it's conjecture. And as far as I know, uh, Tadayuki does, you know, it's, it's his, his technology doesn't, doesn't address this. But so, so how do you sort of parse this picture? And so, so in dimension three, we know this idea of surgery on, on a three-manifold, right? You drill out a, a, a solid torus and re-glue. But as four-manifold people, we know that this could be done sort of ambiently, that, that attaching, the effect of attaching like a two-handle onto a four-manifold with boundary, it changes the boundary by, 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 by surgery. So, so we can think of surgery, sometimes we can think of surgery sort of ambiently. And that's, that's what we have here. So, so we have like, like delta zero, that's, that's the standard three ball in S1 cross B3. And sigma is a, a two handle. So we could modify uh, this, this ball by, by attaching a two handle, sigma to, to on, the, on, on, the, on one side, and then we, we could attach a two handle tau on the other side. And, uh, and, 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 and if these two handles are zero framed and the attaching circle is the hop flank, then at the three-dimensional level, we're just doing zero surgery on the hop flank, which just takes the three wall to itself. But, but at the, at the four-dimensional level, we could we see that this, this changes the embedding. And uh, well, well, it's a question of the, your perspective here, but one of the two handles looks uh, standard, this guy's sigma, and the other two handle sort of is linking through sigma and, and, and links around itself, and that's tau. So, these, uh, so this, this is description of, of this conjectural knotted three ball, and, and the one on the right, well, it's, um, it consists of three sets of embedded surgery. So, you, so at the three-dimensional level, you're doing, uh, you're doing surgery, zero surgery on, on three hop flanks that are just tot totally separated from each other. So, um, so at the three-dimensional level, you, you're not changing the manifold. Four-dimensionally, you're getting this complicated emb embedding. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, 
So if you have a, a four manifold with boundary, attach a two handle, it changes the boundary. So, so strictly speaking, you know, this delta zero is just a, th a three ball by itself. But think of it locally as like a three ball across the interval. And when you attach sigma on, on one side, you're, you're, cha you're, you're changing th this three ball by, you know, as you say, adding S2 cross S2 factor. But then once you have that, then look at that three manifold, look at that, the resulting three manifold, thicken that up across the interval and attach two handle now to the other side. So, uh, so, so that sort of, at the three dimensional level, sort of kills the, Oh, no, exactly. We're, we're constructing cobordism between, you know, the ball connected some S, well, uh, S2 cross S1 with, uh, with itself. Yeah, thank, thank you. Okay, but one thing I'd like to mention is this picture really shows uh, why I think four-dimensional topology is, smooth four-dimensional topology is really challenging. I mean, you didn't have to come to Italy to, to hear from Dave Gobai that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. However, uh, th that's, but if you ask yourself, well, well, let's try to understand sort of how to, you know, work with embeddings of three-dimensional things sitting in four space. The point of this picture, well, one point of this, you should get out of this, is that even though this is a three-dimensional thing, it, there's parts of it that really look two-dimensional. And... I, I, you know, I've, to, to my word for this, these are what I, this is what, this sigma is what I would call an Annalini disk. So, so Annalini, that's, it's, 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 these are like time, I might be saying the word wrong, sorry if you're Italian and I'm telling you, but, but an Annalini is a, is a, is a pasta, which is a tiny round circle. So, so now we have like sigma, that's a, a, a two disk. But, but at the, at what's really ha look, but when you, at the three-dimensional level, what you see is really uh, like the unit normal bundle of, 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 of sigma. That's really you know, D2 cross S1. So when you're attaching this handle, you're, you're replacing the solid torus with this D2 cross S1. But, but, the, but, it, but it looks you know, visually just, just, just two dimensions. And, and, and the same thing, this, this tail looks looks two-dimensional. So, so, so the point is this, 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 this three-dimensional embedding to our eyes looks, you know, parts of it looks very two-dimensional. It's, it's like the same, you know, one dimension lower if you have, you know, a, a surface. And you can think of, you know, this nice surface, or you can think of like two pieces of surface, you know, connected by an extremely thin tube. And so, so, so the surface really is two-dimensional, but there's one spot where it looks looks one-dimensional. So, so the reason why this is interesting is because in co-dimension one, in three manifolds, you have surface in a three manifold, something like mean curvature flow, or some two-dimensional, you know, some you know, topological analog of that, extremely powerful for you know, straightening out surfaces. But if you, if you did like mean curvature flow to, to, to this, this thing, well, these tiny little circles immediately would sort of just you know, become singularities. And so this, this, these circles would just, just, just contract out. And, and OK, but if now you did some type of you know, you know, mean curvature flow, but somehow you, you, you just constrain it by just putting in some filling. And, uh, but, but still, these, these are you know, at the level of the surface, this tail just wants to rip through the sigma. So, so, so this was to sort of, you know, illustrate this idea that, that, that if you're going to, you know, con, 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 you know control co-dimension one embeddings, then, then there has to be some type of global understanding because, you know, local, local moves are, are going to be pro problematic. So, um, Right. So, okay, so I've got 10 minutes, 11 minutes to, um, well, to just explain. Okay, so this, so that, that was the introduction to this lecture. 
No, no, that's, that's right. I, 45 minutes, 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, Paul, it's, I'm, I'm very happy to sacrifice these few minutes to Paul. But, but the question is, how do you, uh, okay, so, but, but the idea is, you know, just a huge number of detail, but the idea is sort of like really, really simple, which is, you know, how do you construct sort of candidates for interesting balls? And it's, it's really just a matter of like pi, by which I mean, if you, you know, making a pi and you, you have this, you know, the, the, the vanilla and the chocolate, you put it on top, and now you put the, put the, put the spatula in. So that's the starting point. And now you just like move the spatula around and then bring the spatula back to where it started. So now you've done basically a diffeomorphism of the complement of the spatula. And that's, that sort of gives sort of a candidate for, for an interesting diffeomorphism of the complement. So uh, what does this have to do with knotted balls? Well, you, you saw there was this exact sequence where one of the terms of pi 1 of embeddings of the circle in S1 cross S3 somehow induced diffeomorphisms of S1 cross B3. So the spatula is the circle. And if you have some like, you know, you know, loop in the embeddings and you bring the, 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 the spatula back, well, that, that induces sort of diffeomorphism of, of S1 cross B3. I mean, something we're all sort of familiar with, which is like in, in one dimension lower, point pushing, which, uh, which Joan Berman informed me was, which is actually, that was her PhD thesis. So, um, so right, so there's a, a map from, from pi one of the embeddings to pi zero of, of diff. And, um, right, so, so anyway, you know, the, the embeddings, pi one of the embeddings of the circle in, in S1 cross S3, you know, Dax 50 years ago showed that was infinitely generated, and, uh, and uh, Aron Zimic gave a sort of more modern proof, and, and here, Brian and I found sort of explicit set of generators. I mean, whatever, whatever that means. I mean, somehow you're, um, you're, um, you know, you, you have like an arc here, this, 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 this pink thing. Here you have a picture in three space and this, this arc, it's going in the past and the future. And, and on the other hand, here's an arc in, in three space. And now you can just spin this arc in three space around this, this point. And so that's, that's, a, that's a, a, a loop of, of, a, of an arc, but, but the, the red thing was, is going in the past and the future. So anyway, uh, you know, it's, I don't have really time to explain any of this, but, I, but that's the, the, the key thing. So these, this, this thing here, these are sort of this theta 2, theta 3, theta 4. These are sort of generators for, for embeddings of the circle in, um, in, in S1 cross S3. And, and now there's, well, there's a whole story about how, um, yes? No, no, they're, they're, no, no, these, these actually generate, they're, they're actually uh, embeddings of pi one uh, up to sort of like a trivial, well, uh, just a, a, the translation, all the other embeddings, it's, 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 it, this group is infinitely generated and these are the free generators. And, um, so, so now that we have to go through this whole proce process of, of translating uh, a, um, a, you know, this, 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 you know, to going from a loop to a diffeomorphism, and that's what we call a barbell implantation. And so, so this picture on the left shows an embedding of, 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 of two, two spheres connected by an arc. And, uh, and so, so it turns out there's this, this really interesting, extremely elementary diffeomorphism of, uh, of, of a neighborhood of, of this barbell. I mean, the neighborhood of barbell is simply the boundary connected sum of S2 cross D2 with itself. And, um, and so there's a you know, very simple diffeomorphism of S2 cross D2 connect, boundary connected sum with itself, which fixes the boundary pointwise. And if you have a diffeomorphism of that, 
and you have an embedding of that in some other four manifold, then you could push forward this barbell diffeomorphism. And, uh, and, and anyway, that, that's, that's what we call barbell implantation. And so, so we explicitly we can translate sort of this, this loop of, of on, on the, into diffeomorphisms. So, oh, um, anyway, this is just a quick question, which is, you know, here's a, here's a, that's called a conjecture that, that diff of S1 cross S3 are generated by barbell implantations. And, and actually, all the diffeomorphisms that Tadayuki constructs, those are, uh, those come from barbell implantations, composition of, of such implantations. Okay, so, um, well, I, I don't really have time to explain this, but the question is, suppose by some miracle you, you have, you know, an explicit thing, and the question is how do you actually prove that it's, uh, it's actually non-trivial? And, well, here's sort of like a warm-up, which is, uh, here is, this three manifold, which is uh, which is just the, the solid torus minus an open ball. Now you could cross that with the interval, and and here's the two disc. This thing d zero, just a standard vertical two disc, and and here's another two disc d one, which is gotten by just tubing. Well, this this thing p is a two sphere, and I could attach a, a two disc a tube from d zero to p by that sort of so it just goes through P, goes around this element, li links through P, uh, goes around an element of fundamental group and connects to P. And um, so, so it turns out there's a diffeomorphism of this four manifold homotopic to identity, which takes one, one two disk to the other two disk. But, but in fact, these, these two disks are not isotopic. I mean, they're, they're not isotopic, you know, fixing the boundary point wise. And anyway, the point is that that a two disk is a two disk, but a two disk is also a one parameter family of one disks. And, and so, so if you have a, a you know, so an embedding of the two disk, that gives you a, an, an element of pi one of the embeddings of the one disk in this, in this four manifold. And, um, and again, this goes back to Dax, that same paper that I mentioned before, is that using his sort of methods, you can actually show that these things these correspond to two different elements of pi one of the embeddings. And, well, I don't have time to explain this picture, but this, this actually also gives construction of a knotted three ball in, in, this, uh, in this four manifold. So, um, right. So, anyway, I'll just flip through some pretty pictures. But, uh, but, what, what, but we, what, what we do is, is now, now if you have a three ball, and say S1 cross B3, a three ball is a two, you, think, you can think of that as a two parameter family of, of intervals. And, um, and so, so an embedding of the three ball gives an element of pi two of this, the space of the embedding is the interval into, into S1 cross B3. And so, uh, so, so anyway, so the, the point is we, we have to develop this all this, this geometric Theory that we can act to actually like work with these things, and, and we found these generators called GPQ, and and it was it was just a you know tremendously long, well, to me, to us, really long calculation. And the end, we showed that, um, well, uh, somehow that well, we just got you know, all these all these elements of pi two are trivial, so. Um, Right, so, so that was a bummer, uh, and okay, so, so, so like, well, uh, what, what, what do we do then? So, but, but then we realized that, that, that the picture on the left corresponds to a barbell implantation coming from, from one of these elements of pi one, but we can somehow like not the, um, not, not the, the implantation, and that changes the calculation by such and such. And we, um, well, we, we, we actually proved that, that, that these, these implantations correspond to, um, to sort of in, independent elements of, 
of pi zero, uh, well, diff of S1 cross B3. And well, okay, then th that's a whole, starts a whole nother story, which is, well, okay, we get these things, they, they seem to be independent in terms of these GPQs, but, but then we have to actually show this somehow these, and we, anyway, we know GPQ has some relation, and, and they, they seem to be independent module, this relation, you know, you know, after including this relation. And anyway, then we have to, anyway, the, you know, there's this whole fan, you know, Dax sort of proved this, this great theorem in his day, I mean, on understanding embedding. You know, actually, he, he was about, you know, if you have a, one manifold mapped into another manifold space of embeddings and, you know, provided there's, you know, enough co-dimension, you can say some things. And, uh, and it was relevant in the case of maps of the interval into, into four manifolds. But, but, you know, there's this whole f fantastic branch of mathematics, you know, understand, you know, developing theory of, of embedding spaces and, you know, you know Tom Goodwillie and, uh, and, and, um, uh, John Klein and Michael Weiss, I mean, developed this fantastic theory, and, and then, you know, Dev Sencha sort of expressed it in a certain way. Anyway, using, using this whole stuff, we could show these things are non-trivial, and so, so anyway, so that, so, so, so these, these things are, these, so, 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 so anyway, you know, using their theory, we could show these, these represent non-trivial elements of pi two embeddings of the interval in S one cross B three, so so here this picture is, is supposed to explain why the bad thing, which is all these things are trivial, is now the good thing, and the bad thing and the good thing is is that well you know just the stuff I just muttered about just just moments ago is that we had this this map from pi zero of diff of S one cross B three fixing the boundary into pi two embeddings of the interval. And, and we showed that there's some elements that were, uh, you know, that, that map non-trivially. On the other hand, well, the bad thing was that, that when, we, when, when we looked at, at this, this map phi prime on diffeomorphisms coming from loops of embeddings, they all map to zero. So, um, so we know from you know, basic algebra, that means that, uh, well, I mean, you know, from the exact sequence, you know, that, that means that we get an induced map from pi zero of diff zero S1 cross S3 into pi two of the embeddings. And so, so our, our elements that we, we construct are, we, you know, we actually can view them as non-trivial elements of pi zero diff S1 cross S3. Whoops, two minutes over time. So, um, right, so that's, that's that. And, so anyway, here's here's a conjecture for a knotted uh, four ball in in uh, five space, or viewed in S1 cross B4. Two spheres link in in five space, and so we can um, two spheres link. And so so this is now uh, you can think of this as sort of a. a Anyway, the, the th these, these barbell maps, there's, there's higher dimensional versions of them, and um, so, right. So anyway, the conjecture of this, this barbell map of this, this thing gives a non-trivial diff of S1 cross B4. And anyway, I'm out of, out of time, but I'll just show you the slide anyway. And, um, and this is another example of a bad thing becoming maybe the good thing. The bad thing here was that, well, all, all, these, barbell all, all these barbell maps become isotopically standard, well, at least the ones the, the, that we constructed, all become isotopically, well, anyone. They all become isotopically standard modulo diff before when you lift a high enough covering space. So from the point of view of, of, of constructing knotted three ball, three spheres in four space, well, uh, they, the, these things, you're not going to get examples this way. On the other hand, uh, because of this, you know, um, things becoming stand, isotopically trivial, that gives a potential way of, of constructing diffeomorphisms 
that are homotopic to the identity in hyperbolic four manifolds that are not isotopic to identity. So sorry to go four minutes over time, but anyway, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Any? Yeah, so, um, well, Ryan Budney, I, I, he's the last, I, he, he thinks he, he, these things are also non-trivial in as these diffeomorphisms as they're, they're, I, he thinks they're topologically not isotopic, and, and well, anyway, there's just things he has to sort out in, in his proof. But uh, anyway, so so v, in a work in progress, that's what. Um, that's that's what he what he's trying to do, and I think it's it's probably pretty likely. I mean, it's probably pretty likely too. Whether, whether he gets it to function, that's another matter. Any more questions? All right, if not, let's thank the speaker again.